Christina from the Australian Institute of Music and I am here to introduce you to two spectacular independent musicians who are joining us to start a new podcast called It's Raining Mentors, where they pop the hood on the music industry as we know it. We have the mighty Josh Pike, the mighty Alana Stone. Welcome. Thank you. Great to have you here. So it's a great podcast. I've heard all the episodes and it's killer. Um, I just wanted to, first of all, know like, did your own experiences with mentors shape your decision to make a podcast about mentors? Yeah, it was kind of the, uh, the experience with mentors was minimal, uh, which prompted us to want to do this podcast. So when I started out speaking for myself, uh, there was really no one to talk to about you know, being a musician um, or, you know, pursuing uh, a career in the industry, there was no pathways to just talk to people in the know and people with experience. So part of the motivation for doing this was to, you know, kind of give access to emerging uh, musicians and emerging industry people, but also to people that have been doing it for a while and want to kind of get, uh, you know, their version of events either confirmed or (laughs) denied by people. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I agree 100%. I feel like, um, I feel like my first, uh, experience where I got to ask questions and, and get honest feedback was when I did a, um, the JB seed, which I'm still uncomfortable saying the word seed and JB anyway. Um, but it, it <laughs> it's just take that, you know, oh, this is probably being recorded. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, damn. Um, yeah, it was, was sort of like being able to see these people who were managers and, and whose names I had heard um, talk about how how they work and, and the intricacies of the business. Um, and it was kind of an incredible experience for me. Uh, so, yeah, that, that I guess growing up, I always felt like there was a bit of an us and them uh, separation between artist and industry. And the more um, I've worked in the music industry, the more I've realised that uh, we're all we're all in it together, and all. <laughs> as Finley said. <laughs> as Finley said, and that there's a lot of crossover. There's artists going into the industry. There's industry going. Uh, there's industry being artists, and you know, uh, and that everyone is in it because they generally love music. Well, I think you know, like as Alana said, there's it's not us or them. Um, so you know. Dan Rosen, head of Warner, started out as the first unearthed, uh, Triple, Triple J unearthed winner. And, um, you know, from my own point of view, you know, I, I started out um, working at EMI Publishing many, many years ago. Marushka Cornelius, uh, A&R director at Ivy League Records, is in an amazing band called Bloods. There's, there's heaps, like, uh, you know, there's a big crossover. Um, and the thing that connects everybody is a genuine passion for music and and you know the thing that Alana and I have been sort of reflecting on is like especially after two and a half years of COVID yeah. there's not there's not really any other reason that you'd be in this industry unless it's because of a genuine passion for the craft yeah. and for creativity and for for music so it's it's something that I think we we all need to keep in mind that it's not it's not us and them obviously everyone's trying to earn money and make their careers work but it's all because of, of being in love with music in the first instance. You've now spent a lot of time with some mentors, um, but I wanted to know what is your, what is the best advice you've ever received? I, I actually got a great piece of advice from a junkie in a pub. <laughs> yes. The insight. He, yeah. He, said, he was like, uh, if, you can, if you keep on trying, you'll get somewhere and it won't be here. And I don't think he was referring to himself being a junkie, but he sort of was as well. He was like, he was basically saying like, you just got to throw your hat in the ring and keep trying and you'll get somewhere. And it might not be where you you imagine it'll be, but it'll be somewhere and it won't be where you're standing now. And I think that's like, it's really simple, but there's, uh, I sort of took that and took it to mean, you know, the difference between somebody who does something, who's done something that you want to do and somebody who hasn't is in the trying, right? And yep. so just, you just have to try. And I think a lot of, you know, emerging industry folks or, or musicians might look at a path, a career path in music and find it so daunting that they don't even begin, but it's incremental, you know, like it's every little thing 
gets you somewhere else and you just have to keep going and keep trying. And if you, if you, if you want to get somewhere, that's just what you have to do. Mm. Very simple. That's yeah. so true. Um, <laughs> I thought of a whole bunch of inappropriate things, but then I thought, uh, don't say that. And then I thought um, <laughs> that but I think the biggest takeaway for me, it was something that I learned um, when I was touring really heavily with, with all our exes and uh, spending a lot of time talking to people in the music industry and just really realizing how much about relationships this mm. is and just being a genuine person, being kind. And I guess considering that uh, if, if, if you can help someone, uh, that's creating a better industry overall. So it's not so much about trying to get something or, or do something for yourself, but I guess helping, if we can help each other, that's always going to be the best yeah. feeling. Uh, coming off stage and high-fiving with your friends after doing a, a good gig always feels kind of better than to me just coming off stage and high-fiving myself. Um, <laughs> I mean, Alana and I, is it, that's a, you know, that's, that's, that's a, good a long relationship. How did we you went school. We went to primary, yeah, primary school together. We went to primary school together. Wow. <laughs> Alana, I was Alana. I don't remember, Josh. She was, was Alana's older. Buddy. Like I had to be, she was, you were in year three and I was your year six buddy, right? I had to show you. Like, like you. Let's go with that. We have toured together. You've performed, and, and like, so here's a great example. Alana was on tour with uh, the Rescue Ships. Remember that tour that we did? And we were in. <laughs> I deeply do. Yeah, and we were in um, WA, and I got asked to do um, like, a, like version. a version. And so I wanted to do a Jezebel song because the Jezebels had toured with me previously, and I love them, and you know, wanted to do a song of theirs and support them, but also it's a great song. Mm. And then because Alana was on tour with me, I was like, oh, it'd be awesome if Alana played this with me and so we rehearsed that together on tour and then we've done that song many times and it's turned out to be like you know a, a pretty popular collab pretty yeah. popular <laughs> um but if she'd been a little dickhead to me back in the day no. like if i'd asked her to do it and she'd been like fuck you pikey i don't want to do that then i would have yeah, been like we would have said that but anyway we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have done this podcast no. together I wanted to ask you a couple of things about individual episodes. Uh, Stephen Wade, something very wonderful that he said, which was quite enlightening. <laughs> Am I doing it? Well, was uh, He said that uh, the music industry has been built on this pub rock DNA, which we've had to sort of chip away at because it's very much this kind of lawless, uh, no rules kind of scenario, saloon scenario. And uh, from that, we've had to bring in like a professional workplace, which is very difficult to do uh and i think it's really good to to dispel that myth that that um that as you know kids coming into this industry that it's it's just great to just drink and um be an asshole and you know those things that we that we said were our precious takeaway uh, messages don't be an asshole and turn up uh I think when you enter the music industry your idea of it is that the more kind of rock and roll you can be the better what I think you find is that you end up having quite a short lifespan. Yes. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, Stephen Wade, I think, yeah, dispelled that myth quite beautifully. What would you like people to get out of the Raining Mentors podcast? What do you want them to kind of walk away with? Uh, for me, I, th I want them to walk away with a sense that the, the industry and a career in music is not as unattainable as previously they might have thought and this is not just for emerging artists but for for artists that have been you know performing and mucking around for 10 15 years I want them to be able to to kind of feel like they have access to things that they didn't have access to um, and to get insights that they felt that they weren't able to get direct from the, the horse's mouths um, but also I just I want them to come away with a sense of hope because I think it's been a pretty hopeless time in history uh, our industry has been massively affected and impacted, but there are still people creating a lot of art. And I want people to listen to this podcast with a sense that there are still people out there wanting to back art and wanting to be involved in art from a professional point of view.